This conference will now be recorded. All right, what I was telling you, right? Um, the way the class is structured, right? So this week we'll cover Python and Big Data. Okay. I'll go, I'll come back to why do we need to, where, where are we learning Python and Big Data, right? Uh, from next week on what when I say next week, right? Um, after next Sunday, right? So we'll start cloud platform engineering. So there are one one we have one instructor, he will be covering uh, the platform engineering. Then third, along with platform engineering, he will also co cover some DevOps stuff, things like uh, Jenkins and other stuff. Okay. And finally, right, we'll be covering cloud data engineering. Okay. So this, as you all know, this course is targeted to build you or make you a cloud data engineer, right? So that's our goal. We are not making you as, uh, you know, as a pure platform engineer. Or we are not making you a big data engineer as well, right? Right. But we are the the end goal is you are becoming or you will be coming out as a cloud data engineer, a cloud data engineer, right? What does that mean, right? So whether it's AWS cloud data engineer or even Azure data engineer, right? You need to, uh, that means you are going into the industry and uh, building the, uh, you know, either doing data migration to cloud or if there is an existing platform on the cloud, probably you are building some kind of application on the cloud, building data pipelines, uh, you know, typical data pipelines when I say, right? Bringing in data from different sources uh you know loading to the cloud right uh typical think of any use case what is it right maybe you know um building some reports on cloud think of that way right maybe tableau reporting on cloud or you know power bi reporting on cloud right um or doing machine learning and ai on the cloud right so this is what the uh, standard uh i would say uh, uh you know industry use cases you would see everywhere right now so as a data engineer your job will be to build those data pipeline, whatever is a data pipeline, doing the data ingestion, doing the data transformation, making use of the existing cloud services, right? If whether we are going to AWS or, or Azure, or there are several cloud services that you need to be good at, right? So that's, so as I said, your end goal is to become a cloud data engineer. And this is where most of the demand in the marketplace is, right? You can be a platform engineer, but you know, there, if there is one platform engineer, there are 10 cloud data engineers, right? So there's maybe one to 10, right? So what do we need? So for becoming a cloud data engineer, you can't just learn the cloud services itself, right? You need to know some programming. That's the reason we are starting with Python. So what are the language expertise you need? Okay, if you have not, uh, if you are not good at that, that's something you need to build on the side. SQL, uh, one of the language expertise we you guys need is SQL database skills. I won't say database as in you don't need to know the in and out of Oracle, SQL Server, and all that stuff, but you need to know the standard SQL. Right? How many of you know SQL here? Just writing SQL, select statement or insert, any of those. Even if it's basic, right? It's so a basic SQL. Uh, if you can, you can maybe on the chart, you can say, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'll know who, who are good with SQL. Even if basic SQL or understand the basic, I can uh, write my SQL statement with where clause, join few tables, all that stuff. Who, who all are good here? So uh, you are good. Okay, good. Who else? Okay. So Kanya, you are good with that as well. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, good. Parimala, you are good. Okay, all right. Okay, already it's basic. Yeah, basic is fine. You can expand on it absolutely. So, so four or anyone else? Okay, Jitan, good. Okay. Okay. All right, Jitan, all is uh, uh, okay. All right. So rest of you, right? If you do not know SQL, I would highly suggest. Um, there are tons of materials on the web you can learn yourself or i can send you some send you some reference material which you can learn sql because why i'm talking about sql if you want to become a data engineer sql or database knowledge is the foundation right no matter where you go okay 
that's the basic foundation so sql uh, language that's the kind of nowadays it's kind of a default or i won't say mandatory but it's kind of you know uh, uh, de facto uh, skill set everybody needs as a it guy everybody sql is kind of kind of a de facto i would say uh, uh, skills okay apart from that we need a programming skill as in non uh, things like python or java maybe some of you are good with java or have done some java programming maybe you know i don't know whether there is a visual basic nowadays but c c plus plus i don't think anybody is learning nowadays that much but maybe and uh, uh, you may know java scala python right any one of the language if you have knowledge of that that's pretty good because you need some programming skill okay programming skill and as in where where you uh integrate all these different components you need a language right i'm to stitch in my database query to it something else what language you'll use typically whether it's java like or it could be python it could be scala right so one of the language that's becoming very popular and pretty widely used is python that's a good thing is very easy to learn okay that's what we'll talk about that today as well okay. so python and sql that's something you guys need to uh this is your foundation on top of that right platform platform we are learning by cloud platform we are learning two platforms one is uh, uh, cloud right and the other one we are learning is hadoop basic hadoop right i will tell you why we are learning hadoop uh, to um, no we are not learning r here okay uh, r if you know it's okay but r you know it's not a that kind of program yes you have done that that's great but um, some kind of like um, you know yeah i think if i've done r i think again i'm not r expert but i think there you can write uh what you call uh, uh functions uh, packages all that i believe you can do all that stuff right uh so um but uh, you know something like python java but here in this class we we are focusing on python okay but if you know java or c c plus plus it's very easy to learn other thing right uh, being a data engineer you need to know uh, operating system outside windows i know you all you know all, all of you, uh, you know, probably use on windows but other thing is is linux okay so try to get to know the basics of linux okay so basic i don't i don't i'm not asking you to be expert on linux or self scripting but basic of linux things like um, who all knows linux here or have worked on any unix platform even if in school that's fine too but in the college and where even when you studied your engineering okay so why you have done okay good anyone else okay yeah linux linux it's all good yeah either is fine okay perfect so rest uh, i will send you some uh, reference material on linux and you will get a virtual machine there you can practice as i said i am not looking for expert to be expert on linux but things like uh, the basic uh, uh, syntax that you need to know to navigate in a uh, unix platform right so whenever you go to cloud you will get a virtual machine many times like maybe virtual machine will log in if you don't know the basics of linux maybe you will struggle so things like i want to list the files in this okay i will create a directory mkdir right this basic commands and to be very um accustomed or be comfortable in a platform I and mean, i have seen people if they hardly even get to uh, log into uh, any virtual machine nowadays because you know cloud services you can do pretty much everything drag drop and a lot of things you can just write query so you don't really i mean nowadays it has, they, they have made it so simple you may probably have don't have to log in but i would suggest um no linux uh, that we that will make you stronger okay as a just like i told you to be a data engineer sql is very very much required similarly knowing linux will make it make you even more confident okay commands like as i said ls mkdr you know rm remove the file cat you know so the content of the file and we'll probably be using some of these commands in the hadoop side as well okay uh, because you will be logging into your hadoop virtual machine which i will give you so that you can do few stuff logging into hive 
opening a simple opening a file create a file how will you do that in a unix environment right? it's not you know cloud everything is all hard all linux best they, they are not windows best none of those right even microsoft um, azure right so basics of linux will be always good sql and python cloud the other thing we are teaching is in the platform side is Hadoop, right? As, as you see here, Hadoop. Why are we learning Hadoop? So before you get to cloud, right? Which we, you know, last three, four years, the cloud has, cloud is kind of picking up, has picked up pretty well. And uh, I'm pretty sure within next three, four years, you know, every company, I mean, medium size to uh, large size, uh, they will be on cloud. Small companies, those who are starting now, startups, they are already jumping directly to cloud. They are not going on prem because it's very easy for them to um, open a startup, start a startup company. You know, it's it's easy for them, right? But for big, large companies who have developed these programs, applications over the years, currently they are migrating. Lot of companies are already migrated. There are still migration projects going on. This is where you will get a lot of chance. I mean. Cloud is extremely hot right now, at least in my company where I work, CVS. Uh, I mean, tons of data engineers are needed. Again, it's a GCP, Google Cloud we use, but you, we don't get Google Cloud people in the market. We take anybody, AWS Cloud Engineer, Azure, anybody who has worked on any cloud, we just take them in because they're pretty much similar. Okay. So Hadoop, knowledge of Hadoop we are also testing. Why? Hadoop has something called uh, database called Hive and it has also something called the spark okay so these are the two technologies or two uh, 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 i would say tech stack components we will teach you hadoop is pretty extensive right uh, hadoop has hdfs map reduce high fix uh, um, you know spark Kafka, you know scoop there are so many things right but you don't need to get into everything because that used to be the case three, four years back. Currently, since you are going to cloud, cloud has many different options. You don't need to be, a, you don't need to know everything from Hadoop anymore. I mean, uh, in my case, I, I see in our in CVS, um, we have Google Cloud. We, we have Azure Cloud as well. I mean, use of Spark, yes, it is there. But on Google Cloud, we hardly use Spark even. Everything is BigQuery, which is another engine, another query engine, right? What I'm saying, Cloud has given you a lot of options outside Hadoop, okay? So, but one thing we are constantly using, at least we are using is Spark, okay? Uh, other reason people want uh, to want you to know Hive and Spark is, many of the on-prem on platforms are built in Hive and Spark. Now, if you are doing migration, if you don't know where you are migrating from, suppose you're migrating from Hive to Google Cloud. If you know Hive, you will better, you'll be a better migration engineer, right? So that you know the source database, you know the source platform. Okay. So that's another reason. So Hadoop will touch upon Hive and Spark. As I as you might know, every cloud has a Hadoop offering. Okay. Hadoop offering. When I say a cloud uh, offering, right? Uh, because cloud has so many things. You might know AWS has something called EMR, Elastic Map Reduce, which is nothing but Hadoop on cloud. Okay. Azure has uh, has something called HD Insight. Actually, uh, more than HD Insight, they use Databricks. Okay. Databricks is very uh, popular in Azure world, as well as AWS world, but Azure Databricks goes very go together Lot of Databricks is nothing but Spark. It's nothing but Spark. It's a commercial offering for from Databricks. Same thing, Google Cloud, which is called GCP, Google Cloud uh, platform, which we have in CBS. They have something called Data Proc, which is nothing but again Hadoop. So you know one technology, you are pretty much you can fit into any cloud environment wherever you go. It's just a different name. That's all. There are different name and different services which is cloud uh, managed service that's the only difference okay so what you are we are teaching you the on basics of this architecture the language how to create programs modules now all you go you know take that knowledge okay okay same thing i go to databricks and do my uh, write notebooks which they call uh, you know 
Jupyter notebooks on, on Databricks, which is nothing but again Spark, Python Spark. You go to EMR, okay, same thing. You go there and start writing Python pro Spark program. Okay, or you go to GCP, you start writing Python pro Spark program on data product, Okay, so you again fit into any cloud environment. That's the reason we teach Spark because it is pretty much cover any cloud and covers one part of it at least. Uh, at least on AWS, Spark is very very popular because the tech technologies they have over there, glue jobs, you see EMR jobs, they are all Spark based. Okay. They are all Spark based. Python and Spark, very, very uh, common languages are very popular uh, approach to build data pipelines. Okay. So that's the reason we cover Spark. And you will go to interviews, they will cover, ask a lot about Spark. Okay. That's your core skill set there. They will be looking for as a engineer, apart from SQL. So, Think of we are going to interview, they will ask about the SQL, Spark, and Python. These are the three core skill set they're looking for. Up outside that, your services and uh, project, this, that, other questions. Okay, so this is the reason we are, as you see here, Python is the common denominator here in every, every platform. Whether you are doing data science, anything like data science, data engineering, Python is the common thread. So that's the reason we want you to know Python well, you know, well in the sense, again, Average is good. Okay. Okay. So any questions so far? So this is this is how it is structured. We are covering Python and big data this week since we are covering only two components. That's it's, it's one week. Um, otherwise, you will take three four weeks to cover Hadoop. Okay. Then we'll quickly go on to platform engineering, then data engineering, then there will be some project. Okay. Um, which you will do uh, towards the end. Okay. So any questions so far? Um, so who all you know Python here? Who knows Python? Basics or any any uh, okay? Basics okay. Twara okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Suva. Okay. How good are you, Suva, with Python? Uh, we just started a little bit working on that. Um, so, like, you know, I wouldn't say like uh, so super good, but I'm like, you know, maybe like intermediate. Just started okay. working on small, small projects oh, now. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. okay, that's good. Um, all right. So, so today what I'll do, I will I'll go ahead and get started with Python. Okay, I didn't uh, um, allocate a lot of time, but that's okay. So, we'll see if it's required, we can have another session on that. So before we get started and jump into the Hadoop and other, I was thinking whether I should start with Hadoop or Python. Uh, I or what I will do. Let me. I was thinking. I have to give you um, so a couple of uh, tools you need to install. Okay, that's what I I didn't I didn't want you to install right away before I get to the start of the class. That's why I didn't send you. But couple of tools. Okay, for Python, um, couple of tools you need to install. One is your uh, Python interpreter, right? That's a typical, uh, you know, I'll send you some, uh, what you call, uh, you know, intro, uh, what you call uh, reference material, which you can download Python, typically 3.5 and above, I think 3.7 you can install. Um, then uh, second thing, the uh, instead of Python, you can also go to uh, Anaconda if you want to. Uh, Anaconda is a library which has uh, Python as well as the rest of the some of the other popular libraries already in built. Okay. You know, by the way, I'm not expert in Python, but whatever I teach Python, that's sufficient for you to know. Okay. I'm again, I'm not expecting you to be expert in Python as long as you know basic implemented level, you'll be able to manage. Okay. Uh, and you'll learn over the over the time, you will catch it up, not over, not in a while. Other thing to build your programs, you may want to uh, you will you will uh, install something called PyCharm. Okay, PyCharm is a common, uh, very common, uh, what you call uh, uh, IDE, which is uh, comes from JetBrains. It's freely available. Okay, uh, you see here JetBrains Python community. Community install the community edition. Don't go for any license, anything. Just community edition is enough. And um, before you install uh, PyCharm, you may want to install Anaconda. I'll give you the steps. Okay. 
and uh, anaconda will give you the libraries as well as the interpreter the python interpreter and uh, once you start your pycharm it will uh, first time it will ask you uh, let, let's start um let's still start okay and um okay For me, I have created the projects in the beginning. That's the reason it straight goes to the project. But if you are starting for the first time, it will ask you, hey, what's the project name and all that. Okay, it's loading the existing project for me. But for you, the first time, it will ask you to create some project, create a project name and all that. Suppose, for example, here I say new project. So this is the screen. This is the screen you will see first time. Okay. The first first time probably you'll see some screen let's see uh september 2021 i'm just saying um that's let's see okay i'll give this uh, name of the project and some details okay once you install your uh python right python inter interpreter it will give you the options so for me it, I, anaconda is already there so i'm choosing python anaconda right if you are just purely Python, you can browse to that location and give it right. But if you install Anaconda, it will give you the option what do you want to use as your environment, right? Because any Python program you want to do, Python is a interpreted program. It's not a compiled program. You know the difference between interpreter and compile, compile, right? A compiler, right? Compiler, you compile interpreter, it interprets the language one line at a time. Compile is complete, it, it, it converts it to something called bytecode or machine code, right? Uh, right in Java case, it converts the when you compile the Java program, it becomes byte code. In case of C, it becomes machine language, right? What do you call that? Uh, assembly language. In case of Python, it doesn't compile, it just interprets every line at a time when you run it, one line at a time. That's why they call it interpreter. So, you need an interpreter, okay? Python.exe, you can think of, or anaconda.exe. So, in my case, it is conda and uh, uh, that's all you have to say hey create a new project basically give a new project and uh, uh, you know and uh, that's your project okay so it create a new project uh, this window new window okay. and then you can start building your new files right and uh, id will help you to learn python quickly because you don't have to struggle with the, what's the syntax and all that it will give you the syntaxes uh, and the libraries uh, methods all those stuff data types it will do it for you pretty quickly um we'll see that in a minute so it's just building it okay this is something couple of things you probably need to do that I'll, um and uh, you this is where you will do your assignment as well okay uh python assignment let's see it's creating the conda environment and all that okay. So I see Python 3.7, go with the latest. Every company is typically using 3.5 and above. Nobody's on 2.6 anymore, although some companies are still on old old version, but mostly uh, you'll see 3.5 and above. At least on the cloud, it will be all 3.5 and above, unless you you end up working on-prem hardware platform, right? right? Uh, if you end up there, there could be some big companies still migrating, but very uh okay all right so here is the project we we um created right which is called september 2021 right here if i want to create a new file i will say okay right click of this this project and i'll say oh, create a new file okay python file this is what you are building right we are not building any any general file we are creating new python file i'll say maybe say uh tutorial one okay tutorial one so so here, right, this is your, uh, your uh, this is where you'll be building your Python program. For example, I say, okay, print, right? As you see, it, it auto-completes a lot of stuff, right? If I say double code, it auto-completes the st start, uh, you know, under the code, and it, uh, you know, it automatically builds the, builds the uh, what do you call, end code as well, right? So here you can practice your work, okay? Here you can just we are just typing something on hello world. Right? So here you can practice uh, your 
work and save it and you can create multiple files and uh, all that right and uh, if you want to run it you can run it right there as you see run button and run it will ask you which file you want to run uh, here this is my file right and it will open up this bottom part and it will output the result here as you see here here is the result so basically your interpreter or your, your python executed your code and shows the output here and you can run it right here you see this uh, button run button you can rerun it if you want to okay you can rerun this uh, thing as well so this is how you will be probably doing your uh, assignments doing your practice pretty good ide pycharm most of the companies using a pycharm so um, if you learn on pycharm you will take that knowledge wherever you go you, you put it in a resume that i know pycharm and uh, have you used anaconda you know you see these are as you are adding more and more uh, tools to your skill set right if you have not used uh, pycharm uh, cvs we use pycharm uh, pycharm can be integrated with your um, um, what do you call uh, git okay for example i can um, uh you know if you have a git repository it can be integrated if you have a spark spark libraries can be integrated that means you can push in push out uh, uh, uh create git, git repository and all that right so here you can you can do all that stuff uh that also i'll ask you at some point uh, go ahead and install git so that you can integrate with pycharm and check in and check out you can do that okay but uh, that's what probably you'll see at work as well any questions so far so this is something i will ask you send you the instruction to install configure and make it ready so that you can build a couple of tutorials here and start learning the resources for learning is python okay there are tons of materials on the web okay but uh, i have used w3 schools but if you look at it i mean and if you see this i will send this link anyway um that's pretty good uh, for our uh, learning it's a perfect uh, don't need to so here on the left side you see starting with the intro what is python right to getting started uh, syntax okay how do i write python comments how do i declare python variable data types number see that everything is there okay uh, uh, okay Python data types, numbers, casting, string, boolean, operators, list, tuple, set, dictionary, if else, while loop, for loop, functions. Okay. So you need to know at least up to this. The rest are goes little complex and advanced. If you want, you can learn. This is more becomes object oriented. You don't need to do that at this stage. Okay. The data engineer, you are becoming, you are not becoming a Python pro here we are not required to do the python pro but if you want to do that you can do it on your own because python is a very good language and we'll talk about a little bit of try and accept that's the exception handling so file handling this that yes you can do all other stuff and uh, if you want to learn pandas a little bit you can learn that pandas numpy very basics right that will but what i want what i am teaching here is the basic which, which we all might know basics of python so that you can get started and write simple programs okay and when it comes to PySpark, you are not confused that's the whole reason in aws you have to write lambda functions those are all written in python you have to write PySpark programs you those are all on python based okay so you need to know basics of python be comfortable with it and it's a pretty good language it will expand your you know skill set and your market value everything okay so that's what we'll do today so what we'll do today We'll go through some of the things and you can do the same practice uh, at home okay and uh, then you know we are good to go when we get to we will have a one week of time for you to practice so that when you come to PySpark, you will be able to write PySpark programs okay in PySpark, when you go to spark hadoop spark thing python is just five percent okay five to ten percent rest is all spark programming okay so not don't worry that you need to be expert in python to be by spark engineer but just basic python will be fine okay will be okay all right so let's 
So any questions? Otherwise, will the way I teach this is pretty much do it um, right here and um, start doing the lab and teach, but at least for Python. As I said, Python is a kind of complementary course I offer in the subject in the course because men's thing is here cloud and big data. Python is just a complementary thing so that is just to get you started and is okay not to make you export as I said. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, I I download uh, already Python three point nine. Okay. So when I check the environment is a little bit different from which one you you write the the code. So what I need to do? You have Python three dot nine. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. So is it is it widely different than three dot seven? Maybe not. I'm thinking right. So if it is good, three dot nine. Use three dot nine. That's it's, fine. Uh, three nine point five. Yeah, that's fine. Three dot nine dot five. That's fine. I don't think that's, a, that's any any issues with that. You want to use? Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. All right, so that you can you can continue. I don't think that will be a problem. Uh, if you have 3.9, use 3.9, not issue. Uh, you have plain Python or uh, on your laptop, you are saying, right? That's what you're using? Yes. Okay, okay, that's fine. Good. So what we'll do, we'll start for today's class Python. I'll just, uh, do, uh, you know, um, go over some of these syntaxes, uh, you know, for starting with uh, comments all the way to declaring a variable finding the type of variable doing some casting right we'll look at some string uh, string data types their methods okay we we'll look at um, other data types then we we'll look at some of the other uh, complex data types like list tuple and set and dictionary four things and uh, there is if else while loop if you do it up to function that's sufficient for you to get going that's pretty much and it, you can learn these things in a matter of week. Just one week is sufficient for you to learn. I know some practices needed, but that's sufficient. Python is a very easy language. So you can you don't need to compile this, that, right? So that's that's will be sufficient for you to get going. Okay. All right. Every anyway, everybody is good, right? So as I said, Python is an interpreted language. It doesn't need to be compiled. Okay. Its usage in the industry is vast, very, very vast, I, I would say. Uh, it's becoming a very, very, uh, I think it's a, even, I won't say compulsory, but even high school students are learning Python. My daughter is learning Python, she's in 12th grade. You know, she's learning Python, she had classes last year also. So everybody is learning Python. One of the main reason Python is becoming popular is uh, big companies like Google, Facebook, they're all their, uh, you know, uh, frameworks, API, they're primarily built on Python because they're all AI ML company, right? Artificial intelligence and machine learning companies. Think of TensorFlow. You might heard about TensorFlow, which is a AI ML framework. PyTorch, TensorFlow from Google, PyTorch from uh, Facebook. They're all Python-based libraries. Tomorrow you want to do a AI ML, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning, machine, uh, image processing, all that stuff, it's all Python based library. Okay, um, so that's the reason Python, you know, in the future, if you want to go to data science uh, side, you know, that will also help. Data engineering, right? Data engineering, Python was not popular in the beginning, it was more about uh, Java and Scala. Java was, but, but Python is being used very, you know, frequently nowadays. Along with Python, there is a language called Scala, S-C-A-L-A, Scala. That's also uh, pretty helpful in uh, Spark development. Spark, when we get to the Spark, you will see Scala is also popular. I would tell you guys, just speak one language, be very good at that, like Python. In a couple of weeks or one month, you'll be very good at that, good, good, good at that. Along with SQL and Python, you create your foundation. Okay, that's your foundation. You know the database concept, you know how to write SQL, now you know Python. That's a very good foundation and a little bit of Linux. Okay, these three things, your forms your foundation. Okay, then on top of that, you are building your Hadoop skills and big data skills and you are becoming a data engineer. Right, that's our path. 
that's our learning path okay and that's what we do and uh, <clears throat> and uh, one minute so <clears throat> I think need a glass of water, right? Anyway, so um, if you do that, I think you will be in the right path uh, to become a startup engineer, cloud engineer. So it makes you uh, <clears throat> learn a lot of stuff, right? In this process, and we have successfully built many, many, many data engineers in the past, uh, both as a startup engineer and AWS engineer. Okay, so let's get to the subject itself. Okay, um, Python comments. Any language you want to learn? Okay. Any language you want to learn, what are the things you need to learn anyway? People get uh, uh, people get uh, scared or a little uh, defensive when they want to learn a new language. Oh man, I have to learn all this. But what is there to learn a language anyway? Think about that. Of course, the uh, environment setup and all that stuff. That's once it's ready. Good thing is there is an ID. ID is your platform. Like this is your interactive development environment ide right you have one so that you you know it will automatically help you build the language help you sorry, help you build the program so when that is ready what do you what else what what things you need to know to become a data engineer right or, or to, to become a good at any language starting with simple things like how do i write comments which we are looking at now right then how do i declare a variable variable declaration and assignment. How do I assign a the value to a variable? Suppose I'm declaring a variable called x, x equal to 10. What's the how do I do that in Python? Right? Those kind of stuff. Third thing, once you know that, then maybe it's data types. That's very key thing. You need to know what are the different data types supported in there. Starting with primitive data types, things like integer, right? Maybe you know Boolean then you have float right all the uh, uh, multiple uh, decimal float uh, double all that stuff then you have uh, you have a string that right which is you know it's kind of i won't say complex but you no know, string that right right then you have debt uh well here okay then you have uh, uh also complex these are primitive things um then you have uh, uh things like uh, complex data types Complex data types like list, which are more called collection objects. Complex are their collections. The collection data types. If you are coming from Java, all that stuff you might know. List, array, right? Array, all that stuff. So here they call it list. There is no array per se. List, set, tuple, <clears throat> dictionary. Different type of data, different type of data structure to hold your collection data, right? I want to store the 10, 10 that students' names in a list. Okay, you create a list and uh, assign the students, right? So there are basic difference between these three, three four things, but uh, those are very very popular and they are used heavily, right? So once you know data types, you know how to do variable declaration, assignment, comments, and all that, right? Next thing is uh, maybe some operation you want to do. Operators. Math operators, uh, uh, unique, uh, what you call uh, unitary operator, these are all that, stuff, right? Math also plus, minus, this, that, all that, stuff, right? Statistical operators, all that, stuff, right? So many, many of those, right? Then um, once you know all this thing, then you will be doing data transformation. Right? Things like, okay, I want to um, do things like I want to do uh, logic, like um, conditional, right? If else, okay, I want to do if, uh, else if, or if else. Right? How do I do that in Python? Other thing, what do I do? How, how do I do uh, what you call loop? Right, things like uh, um, while loop, for loop. Right, how do I do that? So these are some of the things, basic things. Uh, once you know this, 
And this is all it's covered here. As you see here, these are the things I'm talking about. Right on the left side, this is pretty much while loop, for loop, right? Then the final thing, one thing about how to create functions. Okay, now that you know how to build modular programming. Modular means instead of writing thousand line of code in a single file, how do I create separate functions for each specific logical um, business logic, I would say. Okay. For each logical component, you want to create separate function. How do I build functions? Once you know that, then you are ready to create Python files, Python programs, and run it. Okay. How do I run it? Right? How do I run it? How do I execute? So that's that's all you need to know for any language. Okay. I mean, we are not talking about Java, C, C++, writing pointer programs and all that, which you used to do in 90s, by the way. Uh, point, uh, single pointer, double pointer, those are becomes very complex because you are managing the memory, this, that, it's becomes too complex. Fortunately, you don't have to do that anymore. Okay. There are my high level programming. You can, okay. One thing, one of the unique thing about Python is, okay, um, there is no, when you write a block of code, right, the block of code, there is no, uh, like curly bracket, this type bracket and all that stuff, right? There is a block of code. So the way you define the block of code is something using called um, indentation. Okay. And then what is indentation? For example, you are on, on here. If I say, um, so print here, right? Um, suppose I say if, um, let's see, uh, x equal to 10, right? If I say uh, here, x is, if x is, if it's greater than uh, 10, right? Right. So if you greater than 10, if you see, it's immediately it, it, the second line, okay? That means the if block starts from here. It's so if block starts from here. Immediately you see the next line is not starting from the first first uh, uh, position. Instead of starting with maybe here, it is a tab. If I force it to start here, if it's greater than this print uh, something, um, print something, let's see, uh, it is greater than, I'm just saying, than 10, right? Uh, see, it is giving a, giving me error here. Indent expected, right? What does that mean? See, in C, C++, Java, typically you see something when the block of code starts, you will have something bracket like this, or you will bracket like this, right? Typically you have a bracket that starts here, then you end it, right? So this is what sometimes you do. So here, it is more you it is more done through so what is called indentation okay indentation means the block of the code to define the block the block the block of the code your you know the code within the block should start at least one position to the right okay so here it gives me error but if i just go get one space now the error is gone. So this is how it, it understands that, okay, this is the if else block. Okay. For example, I have some other lines and all that, x equal to 20, like this, that. So now go, so it will, how will it read? It will say, hey, my if block starts from here and ends in here. So the next command, next one, maybe again, I will have another, maybe say, hey, y equal to 20. And maybe another, maybe if y equal to y is less than 10, uh, do something right do something see it's so every block of the code right should start with a new indentation when i say indentation it should start with a different position otherwise it will give you error this is this is how python knows where does the block of code starts where does it end so that it will automatically accordingly it will put the logic okay so if the x is not greater than 10 what will it do it will completely bypass this code it knows it will bypass everything in here because it does not satisfy my logic. It will come straight to here. Okay. And here, if it's greater than 10, it will... Uh, okay, greater than, I'm just saying, greater than 10. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this part of the code, if, it's, if you run this, run this, uh, uh, run this command or run this code 
it will uh, it will not print anything here because it doesn't satisfy my condition so it will automatically skip these lines it will look at the look at the indentation indentation of the code and it will skip this thing and straight come here because it doesn't satisfy x equal 10 x is not greater than 10 it will come here if here it is greater than 10 so it will come here just giving example so the the importance of indentation is very very key in um python okay if you want to do nested suppose here i will say i start it here my my why uh, my this block of the code starts then i will say hey i will do one more uh, if here maybe if x is let's say i'm doing in um, if is x is greater than 10 right right see this is uh, it it goes it becomes a, a hierarchical in nature right so this this again um, one more indentation indentation starts because the second block again starts from here second if clause if if block starts from here see it is not it is not in the same line as i okay you see that i it doesn't align it, it comes to the next next block and so that's why you have a tab automatically i id builds the tab for you so this is how um or it will say else this right else um um something else print something else right so see so this is how you write the code so indentation is extremely important um you don't make those mistakes and this is how it knows the boundary of your data boundaries of your blocks data of their core block okay as you see here this if starts from here ends in here this is its data block if it doesn't satisfy the condition it will completely jump maybe something here okay if this condition doesn't satisfy suppose we have y equal to 5 okay if you have y equal to 5 it will not it will completely skip this block of the code why it knows the block of the code starts from here it ends here okay so let's see it is 20 it goes inside it then you say hey x x is not greater than 10 so what it will do it will skip this block of the code it will jump to else okay it will jump to else then else it is i'm just saying it is x is okay so okay so as you see here right so if i uh, run this code right if i run i'll just take out all this thing i don't need uh, these things and all that um so x is equal to 10 y equal to 20 right uh, and if y is greater than 10 which it is uh, it will it will uh, it will say y is greater than 10 right y is greater than 10 again we are learning the other stuff but i am explaining the whole concept of uh, indentation here what will what is the scope of every block that's what i'm talking about right here the scope is whole thing the scope of the second if else is this part only the scope of this if is only this one scope of the else is only this part so this is how it will exit if i run this code right so see it says y is greater than 10 because y is greater than 10 y is 20 right it, it, it printed that one did it run did it uh, print the this part no because this one did not satisfy x is not greater than 10 it's equal to 10 so that's why it says x is less than 10 second part got executed so all that execution behind the scene is happening because python understands the where the block of the code starts where does it end based on the indentation only so it knows right so that is extremely important when you are building your code base okay you guys got the got the point why uh, how you need to maintain the indentation while you are writing the program this is how you separate your block of the code from one block to other block or you know you maintain the scope of each block as well whether you're writing a function whether you're writing a program any kind of program right this is what you need to be very very uh aware of. this if and this z equal to 230 they are in the same line that means the scope is all, they are all all in the same level of execution okay that means x equal to 10 y equal to 20 that's get executed then this get executed then it comes to here 
if it doesn't satisfy straight it comes to here okay if it says hey it's less than if i check it's less than nothing will be printed Straight comes, see, doesn't doesn't, doesn't print anything. It, it nothing, none of this gets printed because it completely skips. Even if x is greater than less than ten, this also doesn't print. Why? This is nested. It only if it gets inside this block, then only it will print this part, right? If it does, if it fails right here, if it doesn't get inside here, why will it? How will it come into over here? It can't, right? So those logics, I hope you guys uh, understand if you have done any programming anyway. Okay. You guys are good so far. Indentation is very, very key. Okay. okay, as you are looking at the indentation, how do you make comments? How do I comment your code? As you see here, this itself is a comment. Hash sign is it hash called hash? I believe right. Pound sign or hash sign that is comment itself. Single line comments can be done using this. That means this part of the code is not interpreted by the Python. It just skips it because it's your personal Python comment. Comments when you want to put some documents in the code. Okay. There are also single line comments with this. Multi line comments you can do using. Something like this. Okay. Three double quotes, three quotes. Okay. Here you can have multi line. This is multi line. Um, um, comments. Okay. So this is multi line comments. As you see, it is not getting executed, not even giving me error. Because it just thinks, oh, this is a complete comment. I don't, I will not do anything with that. Okay, this is all multi. You have to write multi-line comments. Put it under within three. Uh, uh, what do you call um, quotes? Okay, so that's probably here it is talking about. As you see here, this is a Python. Uh, anything which starts with uh, has Python will ignore them. This is a comment. As you see here. And you can try it yourself as you try to you can you can you can do some practice here also at the end of the code you may want to say hey this is a comment okay because uh, uh here this part will not be executed only the second part will be executed because this is a comment okay multi-line comment we talked about that you can do this way multi-line if you want to put hash on each one line or you can do just what i did multi-line this is a comment written in more than just one line Okay. You are good with it. Comment is all good. You guys are following so far. Okay. So, yeah. so it's pretty easy. Okay. So, okay. All right. So now let's go to the next one. Comment is pretty straightforward. Let's go to variables. Okay. Again, as I said, as you can follow the same document, same it's not same same referral mat reference material, and uh, you know do your practice. Okay, within couple of weeks you'll be good at uh, in Python. Again, you are not becoming an AI engineer here to do complex thing. As long as you are intermediate with that, you'll be fine. So variable, right? Declaration and assignment. So one of the thing with Python is you cannot just declare the variable. You have to do declaration and assignment the same time. Variables do not need to be declared with any particular type and can even change type after they have been set. So uh, Python's have no command for declaring. See, Python has no command to declare a variable. Like in Java, you say, in Java and all that, you can say, okay, int or uh, x. Um, I have forgotten Java for a long time, but anyway. Um, so you can do, it does end with this? I totally forgot. Uh, sorry, you say um, double. 
y. You can do that, but you cannot do that in Python. Then you can say x equal to 10. You can have a declaration separately, assignment separately. This is assignment y equal to 3.5. So this is how probably other languages you do it in two steps. You can do it in the same step as well. Okay. But you, you can declare separately from assignment. This is assignment, this is declaration, variable declaration. In Python, your assignment, your declaration and assignment, they needs to be done in the same time. Okay. A variable is created the moment you first assign. When I say x equal to 5, it creates this variable as well as 5 gets assigned to it. Okay. There is no separate declaration of the variable here. Just like I was showing here. Okay, x just int x. No, it will not. It will give you error. What I may say int. Uh, I can't even say int and all that. I'll talk that. That I'll I'll talk in a minute anyway. But um, so other thing. Okay. Um, other thing with with uh, Python is there is no explicit. No explicit. Explicit, explicit, okay, explicit data type declaration. Okay. There is no explicit data data type declaration in Python. Okay, there is no. What, do, what does that mean? Here I say int x double y. You see here, do am I doing any any such thing here? Uh, int x and y. so that is not required. Python automatically assigns the data type. Okay, so. Okay, I'm, we are talking about declaration, variable declaration, and assignment. Okay, so I say x equal to 10, as I already said, or maybe uh, a equal to 10, okay. or b equal to 10.5. Okay. S equal to John. Okay. Or I say uh, um, B equal to true. Okay. So these are different data types. What data types is type is this? This is integer, right? Okay, you cannot do that. Yeah, I have to put comment here right and this is a float right and this is a string and this is a boolean okay so you don't need to declare it all you have to say whatever you say it will automatically know python will know what is the data type there is no explicit declaration of the variable even in complex tests, suppose you are creating a list like L equal to list of uh, maybe uh, numbers, one, two, four, five, six, you don't need it. It will automatically find out it's a list. So Python knows the data type automatically based on the value you assign to. And you can switch the data type, by the way. You can, uh, you know, you can do casting from one variable to other data type, one data type to other data type, you can do the casting. Okay. So as you see here, so there is no variable declaration. Whenever you assign the value to it, the variable gets its data type. Uh, as, you know, it, it gets or it gets instantiated. Okay, uh, you can do that. Then here is as I said, x is the type int. This is the now type of string, str string. This is data type one. So what are the different data types we have? The different data types are int there is called str string uh, float okay and boolean right right so these are some of the data types you will they get get assigned data gets assigned and the variable gets created okay how do i know what the data type is I'm just assuming it is int, but is there a way to know what data type is? Yes, you can know. For example, here I can say, what is the type? 
okay what is the type of x okay so it's another good thing in id you see that every time your variables get listed here what is the type of x type of x will give you what is the data type of order okay type type of the variable whatever you want to put that will give you what data type and if you want to print it it will tell me okay what type of data type is for how do i print you just saying type will not work right how to print the value right unless you print nothing gets in the console so i'll say oh type x if i print it it will give me whatever the type of x is so once we run this okay what is it said this is what is printing int class int hey x is data type of int okay so it it knows you don't need to explain but python knows right same thing here if i just print uh, uh, b it will know it is something maybe uh, or oh, i okay let me put it f we we'll have two b here okay so if i print now what type it will be second one is float so based on the value it automatically finds out what is the data type is same thing if i print here which is s it will uh, print str which is a string data type and final one if i print this one which is b it will say it will boolean so now see first one is the int and um this one right uh, where is it this one int second one is a uh, float third one is a string fourth one is a boolean so it automatically it assigns the data type based on the value you assign and you don't need to explicit, explicitly declare like i can't say int x equal to yeah, that gives me error any anyway. okay the red thing means um anyway it's error. Okay. so those are not allowed so same thing you can go through these examples and do your practice right so declaring by declare some variables all that stuff that is that and um even here l you are also keep type l and it's a complex data type let's see what is what does it print list see the complex data types also it is recognizing so everything based on the data type it data data it is assigned it will automatically figure out what the data type of the data type of the value isn't it easy i know it's you know maybe so you, you don't need to explicit declaration you don't need to express explicit uh, declares of the variable you don't need to put curly bracket this that all the stuff right so, you know it makes little cut to create the data blocks it's a record block but you'll get to use to it because there are no curly bracket or this bracket i know it's initially you may get a little bit uh, um i'm sure trouble but you know it will take some time to get used to but if you work on an id like this it makes your life easier because it will automatically create or indent this for you okay so any questions so far comments and assignment and that variable data, data type we'll go to the complex data types in a minute but the simple ones integer um string boolean float those are very commonly used for primitive data types so the this is how you do. any questions yeah um, yeah so between integer and string yeah i'm sorry somebody else talking no 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 no, no uh, i was going to ask that between string uh, and integer uh, what would be the data type for uh, alphanumeric uh, value yeah if it, that's a good point when it's alpha numeric it's actually it becomes string so what I string. say, yeah, string, that's what yeah, yeah. yeah. Becomes, uh, you know, thank you. Memory. That will become sir, one, two, three, John. So I think what it's actually, it's a, it's a,
it's it's actually a uh, but type in a n here it will print string only str especially second one is again a str so yes so that is a string that right okay um now there are some best practices right what type of data type what the variables should start with i think this there are somewhere here variable names okay i'll come to that okay variable names so what are the best practices other thing you need to know is the best practices what should you do variable name can have a short name x y or a more descriptive name is car name total volume rules and all that a variable name must start with a letter you don't say hey my variable name name start 1 2 3 and name equal to um yeah. it gives me error that means the variable name should start with um with a with cannot start with a name start with a number okay it has to start maybe just a name so so it has to start with uh, maybe just name okay. it cannot start with a number so it must start with a letter or the underscore you can do that like something like this okay that's also okay the variable name cannot start with a number okay uh, the variable name can only contain alpha numeric character you cannot have uh, so these are the ones allowed okay you can say some variable name maybe uh, maybe something like a name right this is not a variable name you cannot put a uh, last name let's say this is this is not a variable name okay so this is not a variable name because it has a minus here if it's underscore it's okay वेरिएबल नेम व्हिच हैज एनीथिंग आउटसाइड अल्फा अल्फाबेटिक अल्फाबेट्स एंड अल्फा न्यूमेरिक ऑफ कोर्स इट कैन हैव न्यूमेरिक्स व्हिच इज इफ इट इज नॉट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग and you cannot have any other operators or any kind of like maybe ampersand like those kind of it will not allow okay it can maximum it can have underscore okay so those are those are some of the things you need to look at so these are the things allowed but it cannot start from 0 to 9 and it cannot have a number in the beginning variable names are case sensitive like so age is different from age so age is different from age they are case sensitive these are two different these are two different names the two different names and you can look at some examples uh, legal variables okay this is a good name this is a good variable this is a good variable this is a good variable right but here are a bad ones you cannot start with number 2 you cannot have my minus bar that's not a variable name you cannot have a space there those are all not you know um so that's one thing so you can use this 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 uh, book or ebook or this thing to uh, to to kind of learn it and you assigning multiple variables can i assign multiple variables at the same time yes like this x comma y comma z equal to so x equal to orange y equal to banana z equal to cherry you can do this this way as well okay and uh, assigning one value to multiple variables orange is assigned to x as well as y and z x equal to y equal to z equal to orange multiple so this comes to more list object and you can okay so these are couple of things you just need to know how to assign multiple values multiple vari variables into a, a to a to multiple uh, values in a one line or how to do multi, uh, how to assign a single value to multiple variables okay. so this is something you can then you can go through that by the by the way these are these are some of the things uh, you can um, output the print and all that anyway um 
So you can go through that. All of the other thing, global variable, right? You might all have experienced global variable or local variable. If you have multiple functions, you will have got into the functions yet. If your if your Python file has multiple modules, modules or functions, there could be multiple functions. This is a function, by the way. You can declare a variable outside of everything that becomes global. So with x equal to awesome, even if I haven't declared that variable inside my function, still the x is available to me. Why? It's outside. It's a global variable, just like um, anyway, we have not created any function here, but we have not gone into function yet. So, okay. So in typical programming, when you build your Python module file, you may have multiple functions inside it. Okay. Each function doing something. We'll get that. That's the last thing we we'll cover. But you can have variables declared inside the function. You can declare something outside the function. The one completely outside like this is a global variable. That means its scope is everywhere. It can be used any function in any, inside any function. Okay. Typically, people don't avoid to create global variables. It's, it's, uh, it's, people think hey, it's good, but maintaining the value of the global variables is very difficult when you go through. Uh, don't get tempted to create variable, multiple global variables. Rather, keep it local. rather keep it local otherwise it will be it will be difficult to control your logic and all that because you don't you don't know which function is changing its value if it is global okay you if you use the global keyword the variable belongs to the global scope or if you say like this it becomes global even if you are declaring a variable without within a function it can be it will become global so there are a few things we can uh, we'll we'll go cover that when you get to the function without function there is no concept of a global variable anyway so we'll cover that in later on okay and then variable exercise you can do some of the exercises you will do if you want to do that so any questions on the variable declaration even some data type and all that we can go to some little bit on the casting yes okay. uh rp the global variable is only valid within the same program right yeah, same program, not outside oh. yet. Okay. Yeah. So if you, whatever I declare here, you, there is no special function here. Everything, whatever X, Y, everything is available here. These are global variables actually, pretty much. If I write separate functions here, for example, you can say DF uh, add numbers. Okay. Uh, add numbers, let's see. I say X plus Y. Or return six plus y, right? So this is valid. It didn't give me error. Okay. Then I say I call a function called add num. Um, I call this function here. This is how we write the function. By the way, we haven't been there yet. Uh, we haven't gone there yet. But this is where you are. You are basically using the global variable. This is a separate function. But here we didn't have to declare the. We didn't declare variables. We are using a global variables for our doing our calculation. So if I run this thing, it will give me uh, add num. Uh, uh, here I just have print. So add, I'll say print x plus y. Okay. So if I run this, if we, so what will this do? It will run this run this method or run this function and it will give me the output, which is called x plus y equal to 30. Okay. Where did it go? 30 here. So even if x, y are vari global variable, so since x, y are at global variables, this method or this function did not complain. It is, that means these variables are available to it. Okay, but if I say here, z equal to 30, right? And I'll say print z, it will give me error. Why? Z is local to this function. It is not outside. It's not a global variable. So it is not declared. It's declared, but it's declared where? Inside this function. So its scope is only within the function. Outside it is not. So that's why you cannot do it. This is a very common common thing, but I'm just telling, right? Here it will give me error that, hey, this is not declared. It is declared. But if I put this as a global variable here, then it will give me, then it will work. See, this thing go went away. Okay. 
So since it now it is a global, and these things provide. So look at the scope of the variable. The scope is this here. Its scope is all over the file. Its scope is within this function only. Okay. Uh, if you if you do that. So the, here the, the see now it is came back again. So, so look at those basic things. What you know those are important. Okay. Then um, so how do I I was talking about casting. How do I change one data type to other type? Right. So we are saying hey x equal to uh, 10, and I want to change this uh, 10 to a string data type, or I want to change this is an integer I know. Right. I can print the data type anyway, which is uh, x is uh, data type for x is um, which is uh, type, right? How do I know the data type? Type, right? x. So if I click print it, okay, it will give me a final one. It will tell me uh, a type of data type of x is integer, right? I want to convert that to, I want to convert that x to float. Float means it will be 10 dot zero. That's all right. So maybe you say y equal to. If how do I convert the x to float? You all you have to say float. Okay. So this float and float of x that will convert the data type of x to float. Okay. Same thing you want to convert that to string. It's a string, str of x. Okay. So this is how you convert one data type to other. Okay. This is how you convert one data type to other. And if you want to convert the f to an integer, you say int of f. Okay, so that will convert the f to integer. What will you get if you convert 2.5 to integer? What will you get? Anyone? To convert the data type, what the value will be? So data type, if I convert all those things, the values will be okay. Anyway, y, I want to uh, y, s, and i. Okay. So I'm just going to run it anyway. Um, so you see, I converted y to float, now 10 became 10.0. Is it float now? Yes, 10.0 is float. I converted 10 to string. Yes, it says 10, but it's actually it will have it will be it will be a string data type. Okay, that we'll know by typing the printing it. Now look at the third one. 2.5 we converted to integer. What do you say? What do what do we get? Only two. So it will pick the first part of the float uh, variable. Okay, second part is makes what makes it float, right? So, um, so it will print only, uh, only two. Okay, that's what it does. Okay, you got this point. So when I convert a flow to integer, only it will pick the integer part of it. I, what do we say? It's the scale precision. This is the precision, right? I think what the first part it said scale, something. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, so two is what is picked up now here. Okay, so this is how you convert. Or casting, what you call data type casting using float, str, int. This is a, okay, Boolean and all that probably. Uh, maybe there is an example of Boolean as well, but casting, if you see that. Yeah. Look at the example int, float, and str. These are the three things we just covered. Int will take a, uh, if we cannot convert, suppose you are trying to force to convert a maybe, I want to convert. Uh, a string, like for example, I have a s equal to uh, or a st uh, name equal to John or John, right? Can I convert that to integer? No, it's a name. I cannot convert it, right? So can I say int of name? Cannot do that. It will it will run. It will fail. Okay. You give me you probably will give me error. See, it's an error somewhere here. See, 
invalid in IE literal, literal for int with base 10 and all that. John. John is not something we can do the casting because it is not float or anything that can be converted to a integer. Okay, it gives me error. But that's a runtime error. Okay, that's a runtime error. And you'll see, you will probably not see that while you write the code, but when you're running, it will give you error that because it cannot be converted. Okay, so those are some of the things you can, you, you, this is how you will, you will uh, convert one data type to other. Here are some examples x equal to int of one, that will be one, int of two dot eight will be two, int of a string, three is represented as a string here because you have double quote, the output will be three, right? Same thing with float. If I might convert one to float, it will become 1.0. 2.8 will stay as 2.8. Three becomes 3.0. 4.2 becomes 4.2, right? It's just know the things, right? And this is how you convert to float. Same thing, how to convert to string. S1, you convert to string, again, it's same thing, S1. Convert a two to uh, string, it will put quotes around it automatically. To put change, uh, if, you, if you convert 3.0, it will put quotes around it. That way it will string. So those are some of the things you need to learn, okay? Casting, data type casting. Any question, data type casting, uh, variable declaration, variable assignment, Printing them, all that stuff, right? This is pretty straightforward, very easy writing program. Okay. The type type means that's the type of that variable. Whatever you say, put type that gives you the type of that variable. Somebody asked you in the question anyway, hey, how do I know the data type of a variable? You say put type. Just you know, apply the type on top of it, it will give you the data type variable. How do I cast between one thing, one to other? So either you can use float, string, integer, based on the data type, you can use this thing. Okay, okay what's next? String. Okay. String. I would say it's a complex data type, but it has, it can do a lot of stuff, right? String, although it looks like a simple primitive data type, there are a lot of what you call um, methods available okay. here. We'll talk about that methods. Things like I can count, make a string, capitalize it. I can center it. I can count the number of you know times something occurring. Uh, find out what it is. Is it ending with something or not? Find some. Uh, Letter or a you know search for string search for a, some specific uh, particular letter and all that within a string. There are so many things you can do. It will check is it alpha numeric string or just the numeric string or alpha string. Right? Is it alpha? Is it decimal? Is it digit? All those things are so many. As you see here, there are so many methods are available. Uppercase it will make it uppercase. Make it lower it will lower, lower case. Split the string into multiple. String to smaller uh, data sets. So many things you can do. So, what we are introducing here is string is you can think of as a complex data type. You can think of it since it is not, it has so many methods. These are called method, right? These are called method which are inbuilt. Once you declare a string, it is these methods are available to you so that you can change the data to something else. Like if there is a lowercase string, I can convert to uppercase string. I want to find out something in the string. You see, string doesn't have a string can be a three-letter word, it could be a hundred letter sentence also. So I want to find something. I'm looking for Hadoop or Python in a sentence. How many times it is there? So here, yeah, this is what I can do. Returns the number of times a specified value occurs in a string. I can say count. And I can probably give that uh, here. I love apple. Apples are my best uh, favorite food. I'm looking for apple. See, it is a, it's it's a txt dot count and look and uh, and uh, you know passes the value called apple. It will give me output how many? One, two. It will give me output of, out of output of two. So right. So this is the this is the advantage of all this. So you know it makes your life easier when you are doing some 
data analysis. Okay, so all these things you can use. You don't need to remember everything, but you can always find that out whenever it is required. Is there any space? Is space? Is it upper or lower? That also you can say. The boolean. It is it returns a boolean type. Is it because it's checking. Is 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 it? Yes or no? Kind of a right. Join two data two strings or many. Okay, so, so string, as I say, uh, maybe s equal to. So string is a complex uh, variable with many methods, and you can it will you can use those methods to do lot of stuff. Okay, uh, I am loading Python. I'm just saying. Python is a good language. Okay. Python is a easy language, let's see. So this is the string. Now I can do a lot of stuff, right? So I can say length of length of S that will give you how many letter, how many character characters are there. And I can print it here. That is pure length of the string. How many? 48. Not here. Where is it? Print length S. Oh, okay. What is it printing? The length is there, right? Length. 48, yeah. What is, is there something else underneath? Oh, okay. Here it is there. Okay, that's right. I said, what is it printing? Okay, that part. Okay. So where is it coming from? That's something after that. 48. So how many characters are there in here? There are 48 characters. Okay. So I want to, so as you said, as I said, right? The string uh, get used to some of the things, right? So I say, okay, how many uh, I'm looking for uh, count of how many pythons are there here, okay? Whether they are case sensitive, so how many are there? Okay, how many are there? I want to print it. I want to print how many are there? How many it will print? Two, right? There are two pythons. If I run it, two, right? So you're using the count method to calculate how many pythons are there. So you are searching for it will automatically search for you, give you the count. Oh, I want to make this string uppercase. Okay, S dot upper. Okay. When I make it upper and I print it, it will make me I make the whole string as upper. Okay, see, I am learning Python, Python, right? Or I am to split it. Hey, I want to break it down into small, into individual, uh, what do you call um tokens right so i can say s dot split and uh, one thing you might have noticed when you're using the id it gives you all these methods right away i don't need to remember anything I, as soon as i say s dot it will give me all these functions here i don't need to remember they're all here whatever i want to use you can use i can saw i can know what you which only you need to know is what is used for what is it decimal is it a digit is it a, is a numeric, these are all, you know, those are things you are, you know, this is the methods. Some are very straightforward. Some you may need to look at some example. So we are using split. Okay. Uh, split. And I want to split it based on what? Maybe space. Because it's, it is, uh, there is space in between, right? So I want to split, you can split, you can give a split character. You want to split it by space, you want to split by, um, you know, comma, pi, whatever. We don't have comma here, so we'll split it by space. So if we split it by space, what will happen? It will break it down into separate tokens and store the token. Okay, let's see, L equal to, I'll say, uh, tokens. Okay, if I... So this is the, the output of it is stored in what? Token. So what is the type of token? Let's say print, what is in token? What type of, what type of object is this? Let's see, token. What do you think, what is it? Anyone? When I split a string into separate tokens, 
what type of variable does it create the output list exactly so this is a list where did it go okay it's printing the whole thing anyway okay see it's a list object exactly so if you just type the type of it it will tell you it is a type it's a it is a what you call list of okay. see list so when you break down or when you split the sentence or the whole string based on some character or characters it creates these tokens and stores the tokens in a object called list so the list is the best thing where you can store it's like array might have studied in uh, in java wherever c and all that right where you can store more than one object okay you can store more than one object and list can carry multiple data type of object as well one one element can be integer other one could be uh, you know string other one could be something else okay uh, i said in, in integer float every kind of data type it can store okay So as you see here, the type is list and the output is also here. It's printed as a list here. I am learning Python. Python is every token is a separate element in the list, right? Because a list, we haven't gone into list yet, but that's what it is doing. So as I'm talking, what I'm talking about, there are so many methods here you can use. I want to replace something with something else. I have to replace a word with something else. I have to replace the banana with apple. You can say just replace pretty easy i say s dot replace okay and so s dot replace and i'll replace maybe python python with uh maybe huddle let's see okay and uh once i replace it let's say it's called s1 the new object right we can assign it to s1 and let's say print print s1 Okay, let's see what does it print. What did you say? See, Python is replaced by Hadoop now. I'm learning Hadoop. Hadoop is an easy language. So you can replace the um, any all the instances of the Python in there. Also, you can mention how many you want to install. I think replace. That's also there. You can look at the uh, definition of it. How many? Count. How many you want to? I want to. I want to replace only the first two. I want to replace only first 10 or just first one you can do that too okay so different variations of the so so look at the when you print in uh when you type in s dot replace see the definition of it self old new and count self means you are replacing the same object then self you don't have to mention it it's automatically it is it is the self object because you are seeing s dot old ins what is the old here in python new is hadoop count if you don't give count by default it's everything every instance of it but if i say hey only only in uh, one one instance of it okay only uh, print one instance of it then it will only change one word see only first one it changed second one is still python you got that so you can mention how many words or how many instances of that old word you want to replace okay so there are as you see here is very useful uh so many methods you can practice at home you don't i'm not practicing showing you everything you can see the index of a word i want to find the index of where it is what what where what where does it start from i think there's something find searches the string for a specific value and returns the position where is it i'm trying to find that word hadoop or uh, uh, python which location it is right starting for from digit one or two three which position what's the position that one so you can find out also what does it end with or does it end with does it end with it's a boolean output yes or no kind of answer 
returns even a centered string as well. So, so many things are there. Capitalize. Uh, capital is same is uppercase, by the way. Capitalize and upper, both are same, lowercase and lower. I think, yeah, low, I think lowercase is there. Uh, lowercase should be there, I think. Maybe not. It's not the lower, only L. Yeah, lower, yeah. Trimmed version, you want to trim it? L strip, stripping the thing, right? So there are quite a few. R justified, left justified, you can justify your thing. Okay, so so many things starts with uh, what is the title? Converts are the first character of each word as uppercase. See, this is nothing but what you call um, in string. I N no no. It's, what is it called? Uh, in uh, Oracle and uh, used to be different. Uh, I forgot what is it called. In init cap. Yes, init cap. Yes, init cap. That's right. So it's the same as title. Make the first letter of every word uppercase. That's called title. Okay, so so many things are there, you just have to practice it. Okay, there are some so many exercises, so I'll give you some exercises, but this as long as you practice, you will be good. Boolean, all that stuff, I don't want to get in, it's just pure, you know, you can uh, Boolean, you know, true or false kind of thing. Is it, uh, uh, you declare it as a Boolean. In programming, you often need to know if the ex expression is true or false. Okay, if it is greater than this, suppose you are testing. If 10, 9 is 10 is greater than 9, the output is a Boolean. It will say true or false. Okay. That means if this is a print, 10 greater than as the same thing I'm doing here. The output of it is what? Is 10 greater than 9? Yes. So it will say true. Is it less than 9? No, it will say false, right? So it is evaluating the expression, output is a Boolean. Yes or no, true or false. That's what it is doing. Since 10 is less than nine, it's a, hey, it's false. Okay, so those things also, you can you can evaluate the complex complex expressions, not just a single line or like this, you can express, you can do very complex ones as well. Okay. So you can go through that, uh, I'm not going too much into it. Uh, evaluate value and variable. Oh, there is a function called BOOL, bool, Boolean function, allows you to evaluate any value. Okay, just like, yeah, okay. True or false. Operators, basic math operators, uh, all the arithmetic operators, assignment operators, like greater than, less than, equal to, comparison operators, logical operator, all that stuff, right? Here, plus, you can add numbers. You can do minus, you can do multiplication, you can do division, modulus, like this one, you might know exponential x to the power 5, x double star 5. Flow division, I don't know what that is. Flow division. Python assignment operator equal to, it's assigning. This is like x equal to x plus 3, you know that, right? Minus equal to x equal to x minus 3. You can do both ways, you can do this way as well, if you want to, or you can do this way. Okay, both are same, x equal to x plus 3 equal to, same as x plus equal to 3. So nothing but x equal to x plus. Modulus will do, okay, exponential. And what is this? Uh, uh, operator. Okay, x equal to x and 3. Oh, what is this? Is it... Um, who knows what this is? This is not equal to, by the way. Okay, this is not equal to. Um, you might want to look at what those those are. Some of the special uh, operators. Okay, you guys look at it. Okay. Uh, so, any questions so far? So you already know quite a bit of thing, right? How to declare a variable? How to assign some value to it? You know all that stuff, uh, you how to do the casting, find the type of the variable using type, casting from int to string, string to int, float to this, this are right, using all those uh, str, int, uh, all that, you know, methods, right? String, we looked at a few things, right? You can do that, casting number, all that stuff. So it's pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing complex to work. Other thing we want to cover very quickly is complex data type. 
those are very very important and you will be using the list dictionary many places okay in your programming these are probably heavily used for example list is heavily used dictionary is heavily used okay. so okay so questions will come in the interview if i am interviewing somebody who has python basic python i'll just test very basics hey what are the different difference between list and tuple list and all that stuff if i have you know for example i told you that if i'm strip if i'm doing a split of a string what's the output variable looks like it's a list how do i print the values of a list so that at least the guy uh, the candidate knows the basics of it i don't know if he knows the basics less rest he can learn not a big thing okay it's not rocket science here so so you can anybody can learn but as long as you have the basics of data structure data type all that stuff you know anybody can learn pretty quick so list tuple and set those are the three major collection data types there is no such thing called array here which is similar to list what you see here okay same thing so these are the different data type these are the different complex collection objects or collect collection objects or complex objects within the apart from dictionary which is a little bit different key value pair we'll get that but what how do you declare a list Think of as I said, I want to store the students. I have 15 students in my class. I want to put them in a list object and store it. Okay, so I can create my student list. I put the names here within the square bracket, and this my list is all the students in that class. I can store one. I can store 50, 100, 1000, whatever it is. So lists are used to store multiple items in a single variable. Like five phones. I'm creating customer record. I have three, three, two different, uh, two mobile phones. How do you store it as a variable? Okay, no, but it's very difficult if you don't have list. But here I can create two variables and put two values in the variable and list it as a okay. Yeah, bit, uh, yeah, bitwise operator like that. that those kind. So look at those things. Yes, don't use a lot, but you can use those. Uh, what also can I say? But. Uh, yeah, so you can have multiple variables stored in a multiple values stored in a single variable using list. Okay, and there are differences between what is list and set and all that. So you need to know. Okay, and uh, there will be uh, probably here. Okay, this one. So lists are one of the four data types. Okay, you have tuple, set, dictionary, and list. One of the four built-in data types in Python used to store collection of data. Collection, that's why you call it. The other three are tuple, set, and dictionary, with all with different qualities. There are different qualities. Some can store duplicates, some cannot, some are mutable, some are immutable, some can store uh, multiple data types, some cannot. Those differences you just need to know. You can read through it and there will be sufficient. Okay. List items are ordered changeable you can change it and allow duplicate values you can have two 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 numbers same two values same you can change it that means they are they are mutable some values are immutable when you say those are lists as order means what does it mean it means that those items have a definite order and that order will not change sequence of objects okay that's fixed okay it has a specific order if you add new items to the list it will end at the it will be added at the end of the list if you have a two three five three numbers i want to say hey go ahead and uh, list dot add a number it will get to the end of the list so they are ordered then say the sequence of the values in the list are in a specific order and uh, you know uh, if you want to pop it it will come out it will add it it will go somewhere right so those they have a specific one. and they're changeable i want to replace one value with another one you can do that and if you have same value repeated that's no problem it, it allows so this is this is not true with the other ones to pull and set you'll see they're different so those are the differences you need to know for interview questions and for you right changeable you know i can mean it to change allow duplicate yes so for example here there's a list apple banana cherry apple two apples here 
it will work no problem okay it will allow to do this how do i find the length of the list or you say length l e n it will give you the how many objects are there here it will give three because you have apple banana and chain data types data types is the list itself list item can be of any okay okay it's talking about what type of data you can store you can store any kind of data type you can have data types of list uh sorry data type of uh, integer boolean like there could be you have create a list like this which is completely boolean or you can create a list of this all the numbers integers here you can list about strings float even you can mix up as you see here list with string integer boolean all mixed up here can do that so it's pretty flexible list in that matter extremely flexible you can change it you can have different types of data types you can have um, multiple uh, data types separately and right? all that is possible mutable allows duplicates allows duplicate different data types all that stuff okay that's why it's very widely used type when you when you type the type list type of a list it will tell you like this something like a hey, class list that it, it so that means it is a list data type just like int is a data type list is also a data type here you say list is this you print the type of my list it will what will it type it will type it will it will print this out okay i'm not going into the thing called list constructor on that but yes I don't know whether you know the concept of constructor in C, Java, all that stuff. You could study what is constructor. You might know it. Otherwise, what do I say? This list of list of this. Note that the double round brackets. Um, it is possible. It is also possible to use the list constructor when creating a list. So. Typically, as I told you, right, we don't say int or something. You just say square bracket, it automatically finds the list. But if you want to initialize explicitly, you can do that here using a something called constructor. The term comes from object oriented time, uh, sorry, those uh, word, I want to say object oriented, but yes, C uh, has a constructor. C, C++ has a concept uh, or Java also. So here it's using a uh, list word itself to create the uh, right so list equal to it says list i've never used it actually uh or you say uh, double right okay two three four five okay number list let's say num list And it's a print, okay, type of print, norm list. It will uh, print all of those. Two, three, four, five. So it's, it's, it's a one way to initialize it. Okay. It's an alternate way, but I don't think you need to do it. Unless there is any other additional benefit from switch, I don't know. Typically constructor other ones are, uh, you can do with something. Here it doesn't, doesn't look like. So here are the differences. List is a collection which is ordered, changeable, allows duplicates. Triple is a collection which is ordered, but it is unchangeable. Once you create it, you cannot change the value. Allows duplicates, by the way, but you cannot change the value. Set is a collection which is unordered. There is no ordering here. On index, there is no index. Hey, this is the first one, second one, third one, because there is no ordering anyway. No duplicates allowed. Okay. So there are three different flavor of the same thing. Just need to know what is what. Dictionary is a collection which is ordered and changeable. No duplicate matter. You cannot have duplicates. It's ordered. It's changeable. Okay, as the Python version 3.7 dictionaries are, are ordered. Okay, in Python 3.7 earlier dictionaries are unordered. Okay, that's another thing. So this is where you probably need to do. Uh, some size yourself for example we let's create a list of students let's see student list okay you're saying equal to 
uh, or let's start with the norm list that we just have it right here. Okay, uh, list. So just like string, we saw uh, quite a few uh, methods. Similarly, there are quite a few methods in string. I mean, in in, uh, in uh, list. We'll come to the other ones. There are quite a few methods because it is changeable. You can use a lot of these methods to change it. For example, append. I want to append a new object. For example, I can say uh, this norm list uh, dot the norm list the norm, norm list dot append okay i want to append a new let new new uh, maybe 10 i want to add 10 to you have two three four five i want to add a new number called 10 okay then once i add it um then i want to print it okay, just to see if it is added or not okay so so see, first it was two, three, four, five. Then I said dot append. Then I added one number called 10. Now it got appended. So you can use this method to do manipulation of the, to manipulate the list. I would clear the list, completely clear it up, removes everything. I would copy from one list to another copy and do that. Count, right? Just like we use count, hey, how many, how many two are there here? So anyway, so those are some of the things you can you can you can you can uh, uh, practice. Okay, dot count, and uh, I want to count how many two are there. Let's put two twos here. Three twos. Okay, do we print it? It will give me three. See, there are two, three twos here because it's one is here one here is second here is third one. Okay. So this, is, as you see here, there are quite a few methods you can use. At the index, index of a number, the index of an element in there. Which of the, which one is that? How, what is the index of it? First one, second one, third one, all right? Okay, you can use list of that. Okay, what's your, uh, you are saying? Um, you you will use list constructor in case you want to convert the other. Yeah, of course, yes. You want to convert one data type to other type, same way. Yes, so that's a good point. So, so when you're saying that you can you can use uh, this uh, constructor just like we used. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah, of, of, of course. Yes, uh, I want to convert one data type to other type, just like I did it for the primitive data types. You can also convert norm list uh, dot list. Okay. Um, is it that way? No, not sorry. You can say list. This this is a list, so you can say tuple. Uh, you can convert it to different data type. One list to tuple, you can do that. Or you have tuple to list, you can convert this way. Same way. Okay. That's the casting thing I'm talking about. Okay. Between tuple, list, and set, you can convert between each other using the constructor object. Okay. This is where it is used. Or you can use your list. Okay. Whatever list you want to pass. So, yeah, so you, yeah. can, you can define you can a tuple, define tuple and then uh, you tuple. can use the list constructor to pass the tuple to convert into a list. Okay. Okay. Good. So, you can do some of those practices as well, uh, exercises as well, but use a lot of these methods to. Uh, they are very heavily used, as I said, inserting into a specific position. If you want to do that, you can do that. If you just append, it will go to the end of the list. If you do insert, you can insert to a specific position. I want to insert in the third position. You can do that. Okay. Uh, as, as in here. I say, hey, first position one, then orange. Insert orange into the first position. That means it will be orange. After, after that, it will be orange, then apple, banana, chain. Or I am to insert to the second position, third position, right? That's that's what you can do. Um, pop pop means it will remove the um, any element by default. I think it's put, put pop the last one, I believe. Okay, okay, here yeah. it's a pop one. Then it's a pop the first one. Take it out. Upper will go go out. Okay, pop three means 
cherry will come out. Right? Then we will have only two. Okay. That may be removed. There is no remove. Okay, here is remove. Okay, you can remove the specific element itself. Yeah, I don't think the isn't zero. I don't think zero is the first element here. Is it zero? I don't think so. I think one is a good question, but I don't think let's see here. Print nom list. One, two, or oh, three. Is it so? It starts with zero, then, right? You are right. It is zero. Yeah, just like array and all that. Okay, zero. Okay. I you know. No, here it mentions one here in the example, so I thought it's maybe. Okay. So it is. So by the way, as you see here, right? I'm I'm printing, I'm printing the specific element by this. That's I didn't talk about that. But you can mention the specific element you want to print. You can do that, or you want to do something about it, right? You put the square bracket, put the index, or you put the uh, um, index of that uh, uh, element, right? Zero. It starts with the. So this is the. It starts with zero index. Um, or to your subscript, right? Or whatever you call it. Yeah. Then uh, one, two, three, four. So right. So be careful about uh, if you have ten objects, your last one is the ninth, not ten. Okay. So last one is the ninth. So here one, two, three, four, five, six. If I say hey, print the sixth one, it might give me error. Index sort of bound or something. Where is it? List index out of range. See, index is out of range. Just like in Java says, index out of bound or in somewhere, right? Index is out of range. You are trying to, you are asking me to print six object. There is no six. It's same. Although we, because it starts with zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So maximum I can print is fifth object. That's what it says. I don't have a something called or. Uh, If one is two again, okay, as you see. All right, so practice the what do you call it? reverse the order of it, completely reverse it. Last one becomes first, first one is sorts the list sorting based on you know uh, the value in, inside the thing, right? So all those things you can definitely pretty helpful. Append, clear, copy, count, extend. Everyone, every every one of those are very very helpful. You can uh, uh, use it, okay? Uh, change list item that we can use using append and all that, right? You can use append and remove all the stuff you can use, or you can manually change it the way you are saying, right? Um, so I'm not going to very detail of it. So I, since it's pretty straightforward, why don't you guys go through it and? Um, Practice yourself appending, uh, changing the list item. Like here, as you see here, right? How do I print only from first to third? Right? First to third. Uh, first is this one. Zero, one, two. Uh, where is it? Um, okay. This list one, two, three. Uh, change. Oh, so it's changing the value. I'm sorry. It's changing the value, not printing. Okay, it's changing the value. Hey. One, two, three, um, changing uh, the list from uh, the value from uh, banana and cherry to something else. Okay. Uh, that's how you change manually. Okay. Um, all right. So go through that example. So you practice it. Okay. This is not something I do every day, but this is something very straightforward. Uh, look at the syntax. Okay. Remove list, all that stuff. Okay. How do I look through the list? Okay, how do I look through the list? Okay, we haven't studied for loop yet. We have looked at if else a little bit, but that's something you will probably be using a lot. Okay. You will be using a lot uh, down the when you you want to print something. So we have a print called long list. You can use a something called for loop. 
Okay. So for you say for loop, you must have used in any other programming language. You might have used, right? So for maybe say for n in norm list. Okay, you say hey, you, you, that means I'm saying can you look through it? Okay, for n, n means n starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do something to that list. So I'm saying for n in norm list, that means I iterate through it starting with 0. And maybe I can say, hey, print those. Print norm list n. What I'm saying here? So go through the list, print one every element at a time. So it will automatically increment itself and print the values. So if I do that, as you see here, it prints one by one, starting with the first one, three, then four, five, two, right? So it automatically increments. Uh, what is the index out of range? That's the last one. What, what is it? That's the other error. Which one? Is this the same thing giving error or what? Our stuff giving error. Let's see. Let's print the value of it so that we know what is it print. Click mm. numbers. I just want to make sure. There's three of them. Well, twenty-five. Where did it go? Summary is spelling of okay, eighty. One one eight. Oh, that's one is okay. Okay, so here, uh, 0, 12. Doesn't it, uh, doesn't it, uh, um, what do you call increment by default? It does, right? I don't have to do. Yeah. I know I can probably. Um, no, it is not failing, by the way. Oh, is it failing? Yes, process by default. Zero to allow it's failing. Okay. Um, what what's the so you are saying rather go through the it fails the index, okay. Uh, okay, you are talking okay, about the range itself. Okay, yeah, that's also okay. Yeah. Um, yeah.
Okay. Maybe this is working. Okay. <clears throat> so. Okay. So so basically you are saying hey. You, there is on something called range. Range is suppose range is you are asking suppose range of length, right? Length of nominalist is what? Three, right? There are three, three, uh, three uh, elements in the in the uh, list, right? And you are saying basically when you say n in range, it starts with the first one, okay? Then second one, then third one, okay? So where is uh, uh, zero? Zero is uh, twelve. One is twenty-three. 2 is 25, 3 is 10. How many I have? Okay, I added 10. Okay, that's why. Okay, there are four elements. Start with 0, as you see here. This one. Okay. First element starts with 0, right? So the when it's a range, it automatically starts from the mean to max, right? If the range is so here's a range of length. Length is what? 4, right? By this, because I have added one, one, one uh, element. So it is 4. So now it starts with 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's what it does. It starts with 0. It automatically you know increments so just like in in uh, probably other languages you say for um you know i equal to zero uh, then you have the you remember like you maybe you have done it java right something like this for i you initialize it then you say then your final check it should be less than equal to zero then you say i plus plus right so this is what you do typically right in other languages here you don't have to do that explicitly here automatically it n starts with the you know um, zero minimum right then you goes all the way say range whatever you provide this number it goes up to that okay i know earlier i was giving uh, the whole list itself rather than the list it should be the number it should be the uh, it should be the number of the uh, it should be the count of the elements in the in the object rather than the list itself it should be the count of the element in the list Okay, that was I was doing mistake. That's why it is running out of uh, bound or route uh, running out of index. Okay, anyway. So the range of length, length is three or four. So it starts from automatically say zero, one, two, three, and prints the value. Okay. So instead of writing this way, which is the old language, other way, you know, other languages do that. Here you can pretty much traverse through the list using the range. Okay. Using the range itself. Okay. All right. Hopefully you guys got. Um, so it starts with zero. Zero was twelve, right? Because if you print, um, if you print the whole list right now, num list, uh, you will see what is the object in there, so that you can figure it out, or you will get a sense of what is the size. Uh, here, the list is 10, 12, 23, 45, and ten. So first one is twelve. Second one is one is uh, twenty-three. Two is forty-five. Three is ten, right? So it's just iterates through that and uh, prints it okay if you want to do anything else you can do that i want to do compute something maybe i got to do whatever you want to do right uh, you can always do that i want to multiply the number with something i want to test so if i say hey if uh, if uh, this number is uh, um, you know divisible by 2 or not right i will say if it divisible by 2 so i say uh, num uh, list of that element right is it divisible two? Divisible divisible by two means you are doing what is the modulus, right? You know the modulus. Modulus is the find out the remainder of the division, right? If it's equal to zero, then do something. Okay, then do something. Maybe say print uh, this number is which is um, norm list of this number is divisible by Zibul by two. Okay, so okay, you can do this way, or you can just uh, uh, okay. So what I'm doing? So in that for loop, right? In the block, that is the block of the code, right? This is the whole block of the code. I can do my if else logic. I can do whatever I want, right? Just for for your sake, right? Uh, for just to show it, right? I am iterating through the logic. I'm sorry, iterating through the list object. If I find a, I'm checking every number. If it is divisible by two, I am doing something, which is I'm printing pretty much. Or you want to do something else, you want to do that. Otherwise, else something else you can do. Otherwise, otherwise you can say, hey, it is not, uh, it is not a uh, divisible by two, right? 
so those things also I can't do. And here is the output. 10 is divisible to, as you see here. Uh, 12 is divisible, divisible and divisible, divisible by 2, right? So as you see here, we can um, what you call nest these logics within the for loop. You have if else logic. Okay, uh, I can say else, right? Maybe um, else. Uh, it is not divisible at two, right? I can say otherwise it is not divisible at two, right? That you can do. Uh, this one is uh, okay. Um, is not. So that also you can do. So that means every number you are evaluating. Okay. First one, 12 is uh, divisible at 2, 23 is not divisible at 2, 45 is not divisible at 2, 10 is divisible at 2, right? So all those things you can pretty much, uh, uh, you know, you, this is how you are building the logic now. You are getting the point. Now, slowly, you are building the logic. It could be your business transformation logic, your business logic, whatever it is, right? So now you pretty much know how to do if else and how to do for loop. You can also do while loop. So I will say go ahead and read through that and uh, you know how to do loop and all that so i'm not going uh, based on the time uh you can i will give you assignments that so we can learn okay so i'm not going into the details of details and all that look at the dictionary a little bit <clears throat> and uh, here is while by the way while i is less than six loop it i start with one then i'm looping through it while it is i is less than six you have to you have to uh Exclu exclusively or explicitly say i equal to i plus one. It doesn't go automatically. For loop will automatically go through it, automatically iterate through it and increment it. But while will not do that, you have to increment manually as it is doing here. i equal to i plus one. Otherwise, it will just keep on getting to the infinite loop. Be careful. Otherwise, if you don't put this, it will go into the infinite loop and you have to you have to um, cancel that program, okay? Because you are, if I doesn't get, I doesn't go up, it stays one all the time. It's always less than six. What will happen? It will get in the infinite, infinite loop, right? So be, make sure you don't uh, get into, make sure you put your logic proper. Okay. Uh, okay. Based on the time, very quickly I want to cover the function. Other things you can pretty much look at in and learn. Okay, you can. We can have another class, but I'm just looking at. Um, let me uh, let me tell you how to uh, uh, create a function very quickly so that you can uh, what do you call tutorial two. Okay, so here here we just want to very quickly know how functions work. Okay, so functions are very key, right? To any program, <clears throat> you might have seen other programs as well, whether you're writing Java program, C program, even database programming like PyPL, SQL. Um, anytime you are creating data modular um, programming, instead of writing all the code here we did, right? We could probably, based on the logical uh, closeness of it, I may want to create separate functions for each one. For example, I'm just uh, telling you right here, uh, I can, um, I have some numbers, x equal to uh, 30, okay? Uh, or I have y equal to 40 or whatever, right? I want to create a few functions. One is to add those numbers, other one is to subtract, other one is to multiply, right? If it is not reusable, I don't need, I can pretty much say X plus Y equal to something, print it or do something. But if you want to make it reusable, you may want to create separate functions for it. For example, I can say add numbers. That's one of the function I will create, okay? And I can pass in these numbers. I'll talk about that in a minute, but I will say, hey, uh, add number and here, um, so basically what you are doing here, sorry, Dave. So you have to mention DEF, D events kind of define, okay? So we're creating a new function and it starts with a keyword called DEF. When you're creating a new function in Python, it has to start with something, keyword called DEF. Then the name of the function, 
open bracket end bracket and there is a colon okay the colon means that's the start of the data block that means this is where the program starts or this is where the function starts okay maybe i will say z equal to x plus y the same right here x y are uh, global variables because it's outside the function it's global right is it local or global it's global if i have another function called df subtract i can use the same number again because it's a global maybe z equal to x minus y okay the two functions one does add other one does subtract right so you can do multiplication and all that stuff i'm just saying right but there's two examples here both x y are global variables that's the reason i don't need to declare it or i don't need to pass it they are available to me okay and if you have to print it i can say print inside that function i can say x plus x and uh, x plus y is equal to i'm just saying so y is um g okay uh here i can say print x plus x minus y this is a string literal okay each then the variable itself which is g okay so right so when i run this right uh tutorial 2 right um it's not printing anything because you have not ran you haven't you have only declared the this is only declaration you have not executed yet this is only declaration just like in creating a variable it's only declaration defining it to run it you have to say add now okay and to run the other one okay this is where you are running it okay this is where you are running the program or running the modules itself before that it's not doing anything okay so here here we are ran it and it gives the output okay x plus y is 70 x minus y is 10 so first what do you what did you do declare the global variables using those global variables i am doing addition inside a function called add num and i am have another function it takes those global variables do a subtraction then i am executing those two methods not methods method i know function method kind of same sometimes but i'm executing those two functions here right and when i do that it 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 runs those programs otherwise it is just the definition so the key things you need to learn here is how to write a function what is the template what is the syntax that's very key it starts with the def name of the function open bracket end bracket there are other options are there we'll get there colon means that's where it starts that means it's looking for the block of the code that's why it needs to be indented because it's a block of code you are starting you might have noticed if else for loop function everything wherever there's a block of code it it ends with a colon or it starts with the colon then the block of code starts Yeah, even for loop, if you remember right here, for loop here, yeah, block here colon. Then after the colon, the block of code starts. Any time the block of code starts, you have to indent it. It cannot start in the same position. It has to be a different position. Here it is tab. You, you can use tab very, you know, preferably, or you can use anything. Uh, space two spaces three spaces two tabs whatever it's up to you. Okay, this is how you write a program. Write a and here we are calling that method calling that function here we defined it here we are calling it that's the difference you are good with that how to create a function how to create multiple functions as you see here right this is the basic of writing function but you can then you will go to the next step now i want to pass this uh, variables exclusively i want to pass those variables okay i want to pass the variable maybe i can say x and y the ones which are uh, you don't need to do it here but i'll do that in main program by the way okay i'll create a main program that will be easier okay so typically 
when you build an application so far we are doing just creating uh, you know writing uh, code snippets and um, uh, you know writing some we wrote some logics here x plus y x minus y defining the functions and running it in real life right you may want to run it as an application what do you mean by application there will be some import statements here at the top you know import the pandas import numpy this that you know you may have some global variables as you see here something like that and many times the function uh it, it you know the application starts with something called main program okay it's very common you want to may want to start with a main program main is just like a entry to your program okay main is the entry to your program so maybe main is where your your or uh, uh, what you call you define your business logics very basic then from the main program you call the other functions so here you say hey x equal to 30 y equal to 40 i will have two functions which will add those numbers another function will subtract the number right so i will say hey can you call these two functions which you have already written okay i will call these two functions pass those variables x comma y okay what does that mean? what 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 does that mean i'm telling the telling uh, my uh, or i am calling those two functions which i have just already written or i want to call the other function and pass those two variables called x y okay and i'm asking it to do the thing i want it to do this is how you'll be building your logic. So in the main functions, the uh, what you call um, template or the what you call the term, okay, and the you know um, outline of your program will be there, okay, and the actual implementation will be inside a function. For example, here I have two variables. Basic variable declaration starts with that. I have to add those two numbers i could have done right here if this is equal to this right why didn't i do that because i want to make the program modular tomorrow x and y value changes i don't want to change it okay so here i'm changing i have to make few changes here just to make you guys understand what i'm talking about and uh, okay you can say uh Result of so is this I'm passing variable maybe I can B whatever you do. again A B has no meaning here. Okay, I'm just saying it's just a variable I'm declaring. It can be anything. I didn't want to put the same value x y just to differentiate it. Okay. Uh, subtract value result okay so i'm saying hey i declare two variables x and y i'm passing those two variables this is how to pass arguments or variables to a function i'm passing x to a y is going to be b right so so the definition of the function is it takes two arguments so you have to pass two arguments here second one also takes two arguments i'm passing two arguments right now, if, if you want to change the values, all you need to change is the input. Automatically, it executes and gives the value, right? Gives the output. Now, this is a space. This is a this is the construct or the template of a typical application. You will have a main function where you have your outline of your program. Within the function main function, you may have some basic variables declaration and all that, and you will be calling the different modules. The modules will be defined within a function. First module does, or first uh, function does uh, addition, other one does subtraction, right? And from the main function, I'll control it. Here I can control what I want to do. First I'll call add, then I'll call subtract, right? So you can pretty much control what you want to do um, based on how your flow is. Now, how do I want to execute it? At the end, this is the statement you are saying, hey, main is my entry to the program can you run the main so program will start from main it will start from here here call those functions then go through that right 
so this is how your template is as you see here you, here you see the button comes up automatically looking at this thing python knows this is my entry this is where i'll execute the program so this is your basic what you call the template or the structure of any application you build got that so you have a main function and you could have more than one functions which will uh, do your execute your uh, business logic finally there is a what you are saying you are invoking the main function that entry of the program goes into main initializes it calls one calls second one see they run this thing here right it will give the same output what we did earlier result of addition is 70 subtract result is minus 10 so what did it do it entered inside by main initialize it call this function then call this function okay so this is now if i change it to 40 to 30 to 40 it will i don't need to change anything else it will automatically 40 plus 40 is 80 subtract is zero so i'm controlling the logic from one point and these are all reusable. I can reuse it for many things. Right? Everything is what you call dynamically uh, dynamic. Okay. So that's that's how you build your program modular way, and you control your logic from main rather than going all over. That's a bad way of programming. Would have done everything in one program, man. But is that the right way to do? No. Here is a simple logic. Think of you are implementing complex business logic. One is calculating the commission. Maybe that will be a separate uh, module. Another is a complement counting the or um, uh, calculating the bonus based on a logic. Put it in another module or put in another different uh, function. Control it from here. I can put a logic if something. If it, I can put a logic if it is this. If something happens, then call this function, otherwise call this function. That also you can put the logic here, totally up to you. Okay. If X is greater than uh, Y, right, do something. If you then call add number, else call this. See, see, there is no, I am not saying, right. So he also, or else call this. Now you put a logic around it. So you have full control. If it's X is greater than Y, then call add number, otherwise call this one i mean it doesn't make any sense but i'm just i'm showing the example of it right See, only because for x is not greater than y first one is not called the second one is called and that's why the result is zero only one is output so see how how uh you know how you build your application okay you guys are good so far so how to create a python application this is the end game now you know the basics how to declare it how to assign it how to do for loop how to do if else how to do casting how to do different have list objects you know how to use their law your methods all that stuff all that stuff is good once you know all that stuff now i want to create application this application takes numbers and adds and subtract okay so here you have uh, everything right Okay, so now we have uh, the add is a separate function, subtract is a separate function. Now this is the execution. Okay, this is how uh, you build your application. This can be a simple Python program, could be a PySpark program when you get there. Okay, in the Hadoop you will get there, and you know how you know how to build Python best Spark programs using the same logic or the same template. Okay. Any questions so far? Only one thing I will tell you here is okay, we can do also read it uh, just for the sake of thing. I'll tell you how to read the input from console. It will ask you, give me the number. Suppose you say x equal to instead of instead of a hard coding, I can say input. Input will take your number, it will prompt you something. Provide first number. And do a lot of tests and all that. I'm not doing that. And then y equal to input, then provide the second number. Provide 
second number. Okay. So it takes the both the numbers and it creates those variables x, y. I'm, I'm going to uh, comment it out then, right? So now x, y numbers are taken from you as an input. Instead of hard coding, I can make it completely dynamic. Only difference is anytime you read a number, or read anything from the console uh, uh, the command line, it is it comes as a string. It comes as a string. You cannot do. You cannot add two strings. Can you add x plus y if they are string? No. For that reason, you may want to cast it. You know it is string. So can I cast it to int? All I need to do is int. Put it here. Whatever I read, I will convert that to int. That's what I'm telling. You. Whatever I get here, let me convert that to int. And a lot of tests can be done because you might by mistake put a non non alpha a non numeric value. Then what will happen? Well, the whole program will blow up. Right? So you need to can do each alpha, each numeric. Those things also you can check. If it is numer not numeric, ask it again. So you can build application anyway. I'm not getting into too much, and maybe that will be assignment. Okay, I'll do assignment. Hey, take read two numbers. Check if they are numeric or not. If they are numeric, then only you do this thing. That will be your assignment. Okay. So let's run this. Provide the first number, maybe 20. Okay. Provide the second number, 10. Here is the output. Result of addition is 30 because we put some logic here. Okay. I will take out this logic so we don't need it actually. Okay, so we run it now. Uh, 30, 20, so 50 and 10. 50 and 10. It took your number, dynamically uh, passed those values to this one, dynamically passed to the other one, output is generated. Right. Got the thing, got the point? So how to dynamically pass the values to the uh, to the argument in the in the um, function? And finally execute it, right? So this is this is our, how you write a build a Python application and function. You guys are good. So um, any questions so far? How to create functions in Python? Main is also a function here. Add num is a function. Subtract num is a function. It has its own scope, its own block of code. They all start with a colon, as you see here. They can take you take variables as well, or parameters, what you call arguments, as you see here. Here I put X, here I put A. Why? Because it's a variable I'm declaring. So whatever you're passing, that gets assigned to it. X gets assigned to A, Y gets assigned to B. You can pass two parallel, two values, three values, any type of data type you can pass. Okay. You can pass the list as well. Anything. Okay. But this is how you build your logic and make it modularized. Okay, that is key. Okay. Any questions so far? Otherwise, we'll not. Uh, I'll give you the rest. I'll give you as assignment so that you can practice. There are not everything is covered, but in the assignment, I'll make it a little complex so that you can try out many things within this book and many other tons of examples are there. I haven't covered dictionary. Other thing I have not covered is main thing is try and accept exception handling. I'll read through that and do it yourself. What does it do? Very quickly, exception handling means. It's very important when you are writing program. If you do not do exception handling, your program can blow up. Runtime error and completely, as, as you said, right? Uh, core dump in C happens, right? Memory dump, this, that. If you don't handle your runtime execution, things will, your program will blow up. You don't want that thing to happen. Okay. For example, here, if I, if I put a try block, suppose I say uh, try, and again, since it's a new block, you have to put it under. Um, try accept. Okay. So if something happens when I'm reading it, then it will go to uh, accept. Maybe as a print input error. Okay. Something happens here, it will give you a good, it will give me a sensible message. That's important. 
it shouldn't blow up rather it will give you a sensible message for example here i run it and uh, provide a number i say maybe j what is it uh, what happened uh, the reason is because i uh, i did apply this thing uh except input error okay let me see input error and gives a right here okay so it tries to convert apply the int on top of that it gave a error so it went to exception because it could not convert j to a number how can you convert the convert or cast the j to a number it's impossible right that's why it's a hey, it's input error okay and um and it, uh, it it went inside the except so when this block fails it will automatically automatically go to here and you can take some actions maybe do something i don't know but that's that's why it's printing this message input error so that you know when you look at the log what exactly happened or takes in corrective corrective error corrective message corrective uh, 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 thing right corrective action okay so try and block sorry try and accept these are exception handling blocks so you may want to put your code inside try and block even in inside the module inside the function you can want to put it try and block it's sorry try and accept so that you control or you manage your run time exception something blows up your exception hand you are handling it okay that's the key you are handling your run time exception using this try it may come as a question in an interview. Hey, what do you have you? How do you handle your exception? Oh, you, I have try accept block. I can put my code inside try block, and I can uh, you know if something happens, I it will automatically you know accept some you, whatever however you want to handle either a print statement or do something. I don't know. But that's that's it is available to you. Okay, so lot of things we covered today, but you know whatever you covered, those are pretty much everything. Most of the important things. I won't cover the date and math, but anyway, but some data is and uh, lambda, that's another key thing. Okay, Python, okay, there is also array, Python array, I have not looked at okay. Python doesn't have array, and you can see here. Okay, so you may read through the rest of the stuff, up to function, go ahead and read. Up to function, lambda and all that, lambda I have not covered, but don't have to go through all these things at this point. This becomes object-oriented program, inheritance, uh, that's object-oriented concept. Those are, supported but you don't need to do it at this point okay if you practice these three up to function you are good okay lambda will be used over that's a different thing but up to function if you can practice each section few few examples in your python you will be good you basically think of you are a become a intermediate python programmer okay any questions we covered quite a bit of thing but that's why i say hey i know people can take two three months to learn it but we cover in two three hours all you need to do is practice the basic concept if you are clear rest is all you need is a practice that's all use this thing w3 school is i like this it go has step by step you can try it out see you can try out everything here uh, try yourself it will tell you how to you know it will tell you it will run it and tell you uh, show it to you as well okay okay so we are good for the day any questions so next class is tuesday where we'll start our big data little bit of how to introduction and all that through the week we'll re learn a little bit of hdfs and in the meantime, I will send you this video and assignments for the Python. <clears throat> so next few days, you can try out these practices, practice the Python thing. And as we get through Hive and Spark, Spark at least, you will get to see how to write Python best Spark program. Then when you get to the AWS world, where you have uh, writing glue jobs, writing Lambda functions, there you, this knowledge will come. How to create functions on the oh then we'll say def oh i know what def is so there's nothing but creating a function it will not come we come to you as a surprise when you create those programs okay so that's the goal
and stop the recording